Hi and welcome to this video about UAC virtualization. What is that anyway? So there's something called User Account Controller, UAC, that was created in the Windows Vista days. If you've been around in the XP days, even if you weren't, the way that this worked in XP is that when you installed Windows XP at the last stage of installation, you were prompted to select a user, a username. And then when you restarted the system after the initial installation, then basically that user was an admin. It had full powers over the machine. If you think about this is pretty crazy. Even if you uh, ran something like Notepad or Calculator, very simple applications that don't really need admin writes uh, most of the time, in the case of calculator probably never, you still ran as administrators these processes, which means that any kind of malicious entity that managed it to get its way into one of these processes is now a full-blown administrator and can do anything they want on the system. From a security perspective, this is pretty terrible. It really shouldn't be like that. So Windows Vista tried to solve this problem by introducing something called User Account Control, or UAC. And the basic idea was that in most cases, there's really no need for an application to run with admin rights. Even if I am an administrator on my machine, when I run something like Notepad or Explorer or Visual Studio or Calculator, things like that, in most cases I don't need admin powers. I can just work normally as a standard user, which is a, a, a weaker user. Of course, if the actual user is not an administrator anyway, then of course it can only run with standard user rights. So that was the idea and it was a good one. Uh, however, it did cause some potential issues. The other thing, which I'll, of course I'll describe momentarily, the other thing is that sometimes some applications do need to run with admin rights because without admin rights, these applications can't really do their job. So they become pretty useless. So there must be some way to elevate, that is to ask the user whether it's okay to launch a process with admin rights. This is called elevation, which is outside the scope of this video. Maybe I'll cover that in a future video. So what happens when you have an application that maybe was written in the XP days and it assumes, consciously or not, that it's going to have admin rights. So then that application tries to write into locations which are normally not allowed for standard users like C Windows or C Windows Season 32 or the registry under HK local machine software, things like that. What should happen in that case? A user might have that application running on their XP machine, everything was just great, and then they uh, installed or upgraded to Vista or something newer, and then that application uh, still assumes it has admin rights, but now UAC is in effect, so what could happen in this case? So one option is just the application gets access denied and that is that, and the user will have to somehow elevate uh, so that that application can, will run with admin rights, so that could potentially work. But user, users don't necessarily know how to do these kinds of things, they just double click something and expect that to work. And if you get access denied, obviously users would be unhappy. In fact, that was a, a potential problem in the Vista days, just when people transitioned from XP to Vista. Another option is that it would just, just magically somehow work. And if that would be the case, then it would essentially break the security system. So if I'm not allowed to, to write something to see Windows and then I write and it just works, uh, then uh, what's going on here? I mean, uh, a standard user writes or standard user suddenly gets admin powers. It doesn't make any sense. So probably shouldn't really work uh, in, in this regard, just plainly. But then there's a third option, which is it kind of works. And that, of course, is not uh, precise enough, so I want to demonstrate what that kind of means. And this is exactly what the USC virtualization is supposed to give us. The ability to make these applications kind of work. Okay, so let's take a look. So I'm going to run Notepad here. So here's my Notepad application here. And I want to write something, like Hello World, and I would like to save it. So I'm going to press Ctrl S to save it, and I'm going to go to C Windows here. I want to go to C Windows and save this here in this particular directory. I mean, 
Um, why wouldn't I want to save it here? It seems like a good uh, idea or at least something I'd like to try. So I'm going to call this hello.txt and I want to save this in C Windows. And this is what I get. It says, well, you don't have permissions to save in this location because uh, Notepad is running with standard user rights. That is my normal kind of user. And so it doesn't have right access to C Windows. And Notepad uh, correctly suggests that maybe I should go to my documents folder and try to write the file there because I have full access to the documents folder. But I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to do cancel, then I'm going to open task manager. So here's task manager. I'm going to go and add a column to task manager called USC virtualization. You might already have that column showing up because it is uh, provided by default or shown by default if you just start up task manager for the first time ever. But if you removed it, then you have to add it back. So here's USC virtualization, just enabled it and click OK. And now you can see we have this column called USC virtualization. In some processes, it says not allowed, which means you cannot virtualize this process in a way that I'll demonstrate momentarily. This is the case for system processes, services, and things like that. For most cases, you'll find you have the value here disabled, which means that USC virtualization is disabled, which I haven't yet explained what it actually means. Let's look at our friend Notepad here. So with Notepad, you can see that it is disabled as probably you might expect as kind of like the default kind of thing. So let's change that. I'm going to right click here and go to USC virtualization. And it asks me whether I'm sure to make the change and I do want to make it. So once I do that, notice that the virtualization state has changed from disabled to enabled. So now I'm going to go back to my Notepad application here and click save again. I'm going to go to a C Windows again and then try to save the file in hello called hello.txt. And it works. It magically works. It seems to be very weird. I mean, what is going on here? If I go ahead and use file open again to try to locate this file, I'll see that it is in fact here. I can even sort, I can see hello.txt is actually here. I can open it up and of course it's, it has the same contents as we expect. However, the slide indicated that it kind of works. So let's see what kind of actually means. So if I go ahead and open Explorer here and look at a C Windows, here's C Windows from Explorer's perspective, and I sort here by date modified, there is no hello.txt here. It's nowhere to be found. Where is it? It seems to be non-existent. In fact, it doesn't really exist. So this is the meaning of UC virtualization. Let me demonstrate that again by removing the virtualization state of Notepad. I'm going to go and remove it. It's now disabled. If I go ahead and go back to Notepad and use Open again to go to C Windows, here is C Windows, there is no hello.txt. Which means that what happens here is that uh, this virtualization thing actually redirects to a different location in the file system that is on a per user basis. In fact, uh, we can find it here in this location called virtual store. Here goes. It's under the username, like uh, C users, my username, app data, local virtual store. And you can see there's a directory here called Windows, and here's hello.txt. This is where it was actually saved, which means that for applications which are virtualized, having that USC virtualization feature when they try to write to system-wide locations or system locations that normally would not be accessible for a standard user, it would actually kind of work by writing to a different location, which is part of the user. This means that this is a, perhaps a double-edged sword in the sense that all virtualized application running under the same user will see the change you see the, the new file, so to speak, and whatever changes are made to it, but other processes still running with the same user, but they are not virtualized, they will not see it. Which means that if the application is expected to make changes that are going to be visible by other processes, that's not going to work out unless those other processes are virtualized as well. So Microsoft did that for the benefit 
of old applications from the XP or Windows 2000 days that assumed administrative access. And then when they were, uh, were running on Vista, when they were virtualized, they would kind of work. Maybe that was good enough, maybe not, because maybe the application was expected to make changes visible to other processes, but it won't really work. And that's why I'm saying here it, it kind of worked. And the idea was that for certain applications that were identified as potentially will get into that kind of problem, they were automatically virtualized. You wouldn't have to go to task manager and virtualize them. And this was using certain heuristics. For example, if the application is a 32-bit application, meaning it's pretty old, for 64-bit applications, you don't get virtualization automatically. And there's no manifest file that indicates that it's no, it knows anything about Vista or a higher operating system, then it would be automatically virtualized. To kind of make it work and um, users should probably complain less. However, it, as we've seen, it's a double-edged sword. It might not work exactly as you would uh, expect. So if you go back again and virtualize a notepad once again, here goes. Again, if we open stuff, whatever we're doing from the notepad process, we do see as though the file is in C windows, even though we know it is actually not there. So that's the, the idea of UC virtualization, which can still be used. By the way, the virtualization state of a process is stored in its access token, something I'll probably tackle in a future video. So it's part of the access token that is attached to the process. So every process can have its own virtualization state and they, they don't uh, mix. So in this case, I have virtualized Notepad explicitly, but like I said, there's the idea of automatic virtualization, UC virtualization that was applied for old applications back in the day.